Good morning. Welcome to the Williams official tour of the village of Masset. And what better place to start than at the Masset Courthouse. Masset's a small town on the northern tip of the North Island of the Haida Gwaii Archipelago. It's about 50 kilometers off the coast of uh, mainland BC. Masset's also got a lot of interesting things about it that you may not know. Masset is mile zero of the Yellowhead Highway, a highway that stretches across British Columbia and into Alberta. I don't even know how long it is. I'm sure that's something that you could find somewhere else. But as we do the walkthrough, one thing you'll notice is I'm going to do a lot of this. Because there's something, just as there's something known as the Wrangler Wave, there's something known as the Masset Wave. Everyone in town waves at each other. It's kind of a real cool thing about this place is everyone knows each other um, just enough, you know, like not too much, not like we're all living in an apartment together, but we all pretty much know when someone gets a new barbecue. But I'm letting the background pass without paying full attention to it. This is the local bike rental shop. Looks like they are opening up pretty quick. Something that you'll see about Mass at a lot is, is their hours. They're open whenever they want to be open, right? It's kind of one of those things. It's not an eight to five town. You want something at 6.30 in the morning? You want a coffee at 6.30 in the morning? Good luck. Surfboard repairs. Now, here's a sign of competition in Masset. Surfboard repairs right next door to the North Beach Surf Shop. North Beach, which is about 30 kilometers out, is a spot where you get world-class surfing. And the waves that are coming in off of Alaska. Let's go check out these guys' hours. Noon to five. Noon to five, right? That's when we're open. You want to surf? Noon to five. Over on the other side, a lot of Masset uh, uh, residents live in what are called PMQs, which are, I guess, personary, personal military quarters. There was a large base up here when they were worried about the Soviets. Uh, so they built all these houses back in the 70s and they've all been sold off now. Uh, we, in fact, own uh, six of them as a family, and that's where our uh, lodging rental business is. So if you look out there, what you can see is, is that they use driftwood a lot for their fences. You see a lot of driftwood uh, sculptures, a lot of driftwood getting used uh, in Masset. You can just go along the beach and it's legal to just pick up driftwood. If, it's, if there's old bleached logs, it's legal to pick them up and just take them off island, use them wherever. Here's a local shopping center. Fields. <clears throat> Check out Fields hours. Ah, fields keeps a uh, 10 to 6. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. if you're looking for Fields. Fields is one of two or three businesses that are actually allowed to operate that are national companies on Haida Gwaii. Not just Masset, but on an entire Haida Gwaii. There's two field stores on Haida Gwaii. Uh, there's no Shell stations, there's no McDonald's. They do not allow it. So it keeps it like kind of an old town. It's really cool because you get these little mom and pop businesses that are just thriving and they'll be here forever because they don't allow big business in. Uh, the other one is uh, co-op. We have a co-op. I'll take you down through the city center and show you the co-op. There's the RCMP. We're coming up now to the intersection of Orr and Collison. Collison is one of the two main roads that crisscross through Masset. And Collison is the road that heads out actually to Old Masset, which is the, uh, the reserve. I don't think we'll get out there today. 
uh, but we will get a walk out to the reserve because it's a really cool place to go and check out. See what the weather's doing this morning. Yeah, there's a Toyota. Another massive wave. Because there's no real mountains to block in the weather, it changes a lot. I'm not sure how long this walk is gonna be, but I can tell you that it's starting to rain right now and there's blue sky right over there. You get a lot of that. The sun will be shining and it'll be pouring rain. It's really interesting. Or it'll be really cloudy and hot. On the mark services, as we head, I wanna say we're heading uh, west on uh, Collison. We're heading out towards the hospital and the, uh, the reserve. The height of people here, uh, the original indigenous uh, peoples of the island uh, are really interesting because of the, uh, ooh, $9,000 Kathleen selling her boat. I have ADHD and I forgot to take my pill this morning. So you need to know that. Um, there's the Bloomin' Shoe. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Good morning. Yes, it is. It's going to be nice. So the Bloomin' Shoe is for sale. A lot of stuff is for sale. This is a tow truck. This is one of the food trucks that's in town. Not open yet, but you can see we've got a trailer there. There's a door, a little patio area. The rain's starting up, so I'm just going to sit under here for a second. The Haida people have kept a lot of their traditions as opposed to a lot of the other uh, First Nations in British Columbia. I live in Chilliwack uh, when I'm not living up here. And in Chilliwack, uh, the native population, the First Nations population, pardon me, uh, is, to me, not nearly as connected with their origin story, uh, with their ancestral heritage, uh, with their art. Uh, their story is uh, not as, as deeply ingrained as in the people as it is up here. When you go out to Old Masset, you can see a real desire to keep that alive. There's uh, totem pole carving, there's people that have got jewelry stores, uh, the, the First Nations have, have, have really strived to keep that identity. Uh, Masset is the uh, residence of uh, such artists as uh, um, uh, Robert Davidson. Uh, you could check out uh, Haida Modern, which is a fantastic uh, documentary featuring Robert Davidson. I actually met him a couple of times over at the, the, um, the Ground, which is a local coffee shop. Let's walk in the rain a little bit. This is the Vancouver Island Regional Library, the Masset Branch. Check this out, it's an old log cabin. So the, the, warm, the warm Pacific currents that come all the way from Japan have a great effect on, on Masset. Uh, it keeps it really mild year round. Apparently they had a lot of snow this winter, but that's really unusual. They don't normally get a lot of snow. They usually are somewhere between about 6 and 20 degrees all year round. Uh, 6 being a very low temperature. Oh, got ourselves a Saturn. So we're just getting to the east outskirts of town and then I'm gonna turn around. The east outskirts, or sorry, the, the west outskirts. I'm gonna get that wrong a lot. The west outskirts are where you get to about a kilometer and a half away from Old Masset. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but that is sunshine about a mile away. Hopefully it comes this way. What is this? We have a, a, missing, a missing person. We've got a red dress on the wall here that 
Shailana Brown was missing since March 2020. There's a real tragic background and history to the, uh, um, the First Nations children in the province of BC. I know that a lot of that's been discussed lately um, with the Every Child Matters movement and the LIDAR testing that is now resulting in morning that is now resulting in the finding of uh, a lot of children that uh, did not come home from these uh, residential schools that the province of BC and the church set up you know, in the early 20th century and we're still running it sounds I think some of them were still running into the 90s um, more information on that and and you can go a lot of other places and find the accurate information it's it is a real tragedy though it really happened and it was Canadians that really did it which is really terrible uh, Old Masset is by the way spelt with two T's because the original spelling had two T's now they've taken away a T don't know why there's probably a reason so this is the Dixon entrance maritime museum Yeah. Carving there of a crab. It's a little crab climbing into a trap. And that looks like something that Walt Disney might have an issue with. So there's the Dixon Entrance Maritime Museum. You can see the boats outside there. A lot of real interesting maritime history. And the pottery. So there's a local artist that still makes uh, clay bowls and cups and sells that in town. I'm back eastbound on Collison now and I do have my directions right now. I am heading east. <coughs> you see that the Haida Gwaii Society for Community Peace again they're, they're, they're really in touch with their uh, with their history here. So, a little archway running through there. This is the wellness house right next door to it. There's another sign about that missing girl. Bring Shailana home. This is the Haida Gwaii Community Futures main building. It's a local legion branch. Legion, carved bear, burger night. What more can you say? I'm gonna join the legion, I think. Uh, my brother joined the legion, so you gotta you gotta do that stuff. Got to keep these traditions going. This is a an example of graffiti in Masset. This is what I'm talking about. Their graffiti is. Uh, uh, native influenced uh, whale. There's the liquor store, 1030 to 6. It's not going to be a lot open this morning. These orange handprints that you see, and you see more here. These orange handprints are all part of the Every Child Matters um, movement that started now since the finding of these young children that were buried in the back of these residential schools. Police station. Massive detachment. These guys are always over bumming cinnamon buns off my mom, but she always sort of seems to me, oh, it's Thursday morning, I gotta make cinnamon buns for the RCMP. Okay, we're getting close to the main intersection of town. The rain is picking up, but the sun is also picking up around us, so hopefully this will pass by us quickly. It's a little cottage that's attached to the back of the ground, which is the local coffee shop. There's some artwork there. This is in fact the ground, the local coffee shop, also for sale. Can't let my smoke go out because I'm out of lighter fluid. Oh, I should probably show you this. 
That's my favorite store, and it's closed right now for renovations. It's the Causeway. That's the one place that's open till 11 o'clock at night. So when you need something, you can go there and get it. But now, if you don't have it by six o'clock, you ain't getting it. Oh, here's rush hour. That was two vehicles beside each other. That's rush hour. There's the ground coffee shop. That's where I met Robert Davidson. We've got a couple of benches out to the side there. I'm just going to show you the one side. So that's the Red Rooster. Apparently that's a restaurant that's opening up soon. They're going to do breakfast. Hopefully that lasts. This lot here is where the Masset Market is. And they usually, they have the crab shuck off here twice a year. It's a contest to see who can shuck the most crabs. Just rip their shells off. Co-op marketplace. The co-op, this is a good thing that they built this new building because the original co-op was this little building beside it, which is the co-op home center and hardware store, but it all used to be in the one store. So you really didn't have a whole lot of selection. The co-op is open Sunday morning, which is nice. There's a work BC center, the employment center. 21 schools have been checked out of 139, 6,500 uh, children missing. Well, not missing, they've now identified them. <laughs> Big open lot right here, right across from Masset Inlet. This is another food truck that parks here. This is, uh, I think it's the, 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 the 250, or no, it's the 626 uh, fish and chips. We're having halibut tonight though. Mum's halibut's the best. Believe it or not, it's about a two and a half hour drive to get there. Right, you could probably, you could probably, if the water was frozen over, you could probably drive a golf ball and have it roll over there. But it's about a two and a half hour drive because the inlet cuts this entire island kind of right down the middle. So you got to go all the way down to Port Clement and around, and then it's just logging roads to take you back. You usually see a, you usually see a seal or an otter or two in here in the mornings as well. I don't see anybody right now, but you'll see a head pop up and there'll be a, a seal or an otter kicking around. We're back at the corner of Harrison and Maine. And we'll take a right and we'll go through the residential area. Well, one of the residential areas, the main residential area that is not the PMQ houses. And we'll come back up and go back down through uh, uh, Collison and hit that main intersection again where it really gets exciting. Although Masset <coughs> only became incorporated as a village about 60 years ago, there are remains of Haida villages all over the area that go back as far as 800 years that they've found which means you know there's some that haven't been found that are older because the indigenous peoples have been on this island for 10,000 years uh, it was connected to British Columbia mainland at one time and uh, that's when all these animals and people came over and then the water level rose they became trapped on this side so animals over here have evolved very different than uh, than they do on the mainland you've got animals here the deer for example the Sitka deer are very different deer 
They don't have to be large and fast because they have no predators here. So as a result, the deer on this island are tiny, tiny little things, full grown. It's tough to tell them from what we would consider a, uh, a baby deer or a fawn on the, on the mainland. There's a fully grown deer over here. There's uh, other little um, like marsupials and, and, and birds that are totally different here than anywhere else in the world. So all these, all these houses, they've all got million dollar views right out onto the inlet and they're not million dollar houses this is an old Toyota Previa not a lot of those either that Previa has failed to evolve at the same rate as Toyotas are on the mainland Toyotas have not had to evolve on this island Volkswagens likewise coming up to the corner where we'll be able to see the marina get a shot right through in there of the inlet the library Just flip that up take a book I'm gonna leave some books here I got a lot of books I'm gonna leave some books here there's a little area where you can sit a little couple can get together over there have a little sit look out on the water you can see the boats and through the back there that's the marina we'll go we'll go north now one block hopefully this rain passes us over by then three-story open beam Florida ceiling fireplace, mainland British Columbia, $2 million, Vancouver, British Columbia, $8 million. Here, asking price, $500,000. $500,000 looking out on the marina. Ford Broncos have failed to evolve on Haida Gwaii. This is the very, very rare and endangered Ford Bronco II. We placed that at about a 1988 Ford Bronco II. Failed to evolve and yet it's doing fine here. Has no predators. The corner of the Catla which wraps around from Harrison and Collison. We're now going westbound on Collison again. I know, I know what I'm saying this time. We're effectively going to do a large figure eight. The BMX failed to evolve on Haida Gwaii. No predators. The brick house cigar failed to evolve. So as we start getting towards the main intersection, you can see there's an old church there. Not sure what denomination it is. There's a couple of churches in town. We'll see the sign on the front. This is the St. Paul's Anglican Church. Sunday worship, so that'll be a busy parking lot pretty quick. Little local playground. I'm not sure that the Patrick Star carving there is something. Oh, there's a SpongeBob too over there. <clears throat> well, this is a high school, I believe. Yeah, this is the high school. In behind, they've got a huge, huge. There's a huge track in the in the back there. That used to be the old army base and it was a Husby lumber truck. That's the high school that's been at half mast and will probably stay that way forever now. To 
totem pole out front. Don't see that in many schools. There's a mama seal and her baby seal. Oh, apparently Rick. Rick carved that in 2004. There's the community hall. That is the uh, Howard Phillips community hall. Not sure who Howard Phillips is. It's probably an important dude. Again, no shell stations, no petrocans. That is the only gas station in town. A Langara Fishing Lodge. Langara is an island out on the uh, north, far northwest corner of Haida Gwaii. And uh, they bring in the big guys from all over the world to catch the big world's largest fish. World's largest salmon and halibut, I should say. That is a new construction going on. Right next to the Daddy Cools and the Mile Zero Pub. We got our main intersection again. A couple of gents heading out for the morning. Morning guys. How are you? Good. We gonna get sun today? No? Crap. There's Daddy Cool's Pub, Mile Zero. Open at 9.30 for breakfast. Morning. Morning. How you doing? It's a nice wide main street. Look at that mural on the side of the causeway. Off with their box of beers for Sunday. Not sure where you get off sales at uh, 8.30 on a Sunday morning, but they found it. So check this out. That is a 40 foot long mural. <coughs> Here's the post office. You can see there's another mural on there. Mr. Al Batross sent a letter to Mrs. Sal Monroe. This is the Island Cafe, Island Sunrise Cafe. Now, if you can find a way to get up at 6.30 every morning and have coffee ready, I guarantee you this is a money maker. Get a hold of Pete. 250-516-1868 Guaranteed money maker Across the street there is the Ghost Dog Tattoo and Anahata Yoga Studio and Sandy's Hairstyling Mascon, the local cable company Over there is the local fire hall Here's the local bank, Northern Savings Credit Union, and there's the insurance services over there. So you get your car insurance. Bud's Bar and Grill, also for sale. This is open though, I think this is Red's Kitchen. This is open, not right now, but it is generally open for breakfast. They reopen on Saturday, May the 21st. So, one week, next Saturday. Here's the village and the fire department. You can see a big old carved crane and a fireman there. And this is the school grounds for the local high school. School grounds for the local high school. We'll just go across here a little bit because this is where the base used to be set up. And there's a big uh, listening tower about five miles out of town but the base used to be set up here so all of this concrete used to have raised trailers on it and that was the uh the the, the not where the housing was but this was where this was all military complex at one time so if i swing around you can see all that concrete over there way over in the distance all of that used to be military complex.
because, let's face it, we're pretty close to the Russians here. So we'll do one more little jaunt back, then we'll head home, and we'll get the outskirts of Masset maybe on another tour, mostly residential and a couple of nature walks, and uh, we'll make sure we get those in in the next week. Alive and well on Haida Gwaii. Pontiac vibe. No predators. We'll do one little walk through uh, a, a typical PMQ cul-de-sac. This happens to be also the one that we're on. So they're all named after trees. They sort of go alphabetical. So there's alder, balsam, cedar, dogwood, elm, fir, then it gets a little crazy after that. But you can see a duplexes. And then there's some single units. This blue one on the end here is a single unit. But they're all kind of built the same. They're all aluminum sided, metal roofs, built to stand up to the extreme wind and rain that they get here. It doesn't get really hot or cold, but it does get windy and it does get rainy. And in the middle of every one of these cul-de-sacs maintained by the city is a little kid's playground. So here you go. You got a playground for 10 houses. These are our units here. This is GFC Lodge. We call that one Sherwood Arms. This is uh, the main house, and there's our dog. It, oh, there's both our dogs in the window. <laughs> 